Thank you, Gary, and good morning, colleagues. It's a great pleasure to welcome you to King's College London and, of course, uh, London itself. Uh, it's a terrific opportunity for us, I think, to share views, exchange knowledge, uh, try and understand these huge trends that are underway in higher education globally. Um, so we look forward to sharing our experience with you and equally we look forward to learning from you with a view to understanding how we might better uh, the student experience here at King's. So a very, very warm welcome. Um, of course, I've got the easiest job of the day. Uh, looking at your program, it is literally terrifying. I'm not quite sure uh, that I could cope with so much information over such a short period of time. Um, so I look forward to perhaps catching up with you towards the end of the program uh, to get an understanding of how it has all gone. But as Gary has just outlined, um, uh, we've tried to put together a comprehensive program uh, that gives you a comprehensive view of the issues as we see them here at King's. Um, in reflecting on what I might say to you here this morning, I was thinking back uh, to a visit that I made some years ago to the University of Salamanca in Spain. Uh, now, many of you will have visited uh, both the town and the university. But for those of you that haven't, uh, you might be interested to know that this, of course, is one of the most beautiful cities in Europe and hosts one of the great ancient universities of the world with teaching and research dating back to about 1218. It was founded by King Alfonso IX. Now, the university quarter, embedded in the town itself, displays some wonderful Renaissance architecture mainly built from sandstone. In fact, the city is actually known as the Golden City. The place literally glows in the sunshine in the early evening. But the two epicenters of university life, and indeed student life, over the centuries have been the Plaza Mayor and the University Library. Um, now, um, the library of course, as in all universities, even online universities, is important as an academic repository, housing many important pre-printing press books and manuscripts, as well as about 40,000 books edited between the 15th and 18th centuries. But it's also a very beautiful building. It is light-filled, it has wonderful student learning places, it uses contiguous space for more informal interaction between students and academics, and both physically and metaphorically, it is at the heart of the campus. Above all, it inspires learning, but in a very particular way of students engaging with students and students with their teachers. Now, I don't know who King Alfonso IX's director of estates and property was, or who his university librarian was, but both of those people clearly got it. They really did understand the nature of the university institution. They understood that students had to be placed at the heart of their institution. They understood that universities are essentially people-intensive organizations. And I think above all else, they understood that the affective relationships between students and students and students and their teachers and students and the outside world is effectively what the university institution is all about. And so when we get to discuss later on in this program the importance of technology and the huge winds of change uh, being uh, pushed forward as a result of changes in higher education financing. We need to remember that uh, many people over the centuries have predicted the end of universities as we know it. And 
I've just put up there on this slide a couple of famous predictions in the 20th century. Harry Warner of Warner Brothers in 1927 was reputed to have said, who the hell wants to hear actors talk? And Daryl Zanuck, famous of 20th Century Fox, apparently said in the early 40s, TV won't be able to hold on to any market it captures after the first six months. People will soon get tired of staring at a plywood box every night. Well, as we know, uh, both these characters uh, were proven to be wrong uh, in subsequent years. And so it's true, it seems to me, with those that have predicted the end of higher education as we know it, and in particular those relationships I spoke of a moment ago uh, uh, over, the, uh, over the centuries. But having said that, there are some seismic shifts underway in higher education globally. That's absolutely clear. And some of the issues that we would like to share with you over the next two days really go to the heart of that. As you'll hear from my colleague Steve Large a little later on in the program, there has been an enormous shift in the way in which higher education is financed in this country. It's now financed in a way, or shortly will be, where most of the money that the government puts into higher education will literally follow the student. And there's no question that that's caused a huge shift in the way in which we need to think about higher education and the way in which we need to think about the ways in which we interact with our students. Now, of course, those trends have been underway for some time. Um, students uh, really, it seems to me, since about the middle of the 1990s, uh, have become increasingly important in terms of university strategizing and university planning, largely because, I think, of the so-called massification of higher education uh, around the globe, and secondly, because of the enormous shifts in students across national boundaries. And it's this mass participation in higher education that has been forcing uh, these large changes uh, that we're now starting to see quicken in the last couple of years. Um, but it seems to me that these changes aren't something to be feared. If there's one thing I hope comes out of the seminar over the next two days, is it seems to me that these big shifts are things to be welcomed. Uh, for those of us uh, involved in higher education, it seems to me that there are enormous opportunities as well as challenges. There's no doubt that the increased competitiveness of global higher education holds many challenges, but equally there are many opportunities to enhance the learning experience for our students. Similarly, it seems to me it's a time to try new ways of doing things. Um, there are enormous opportunities for change in this regard and innovation. And again, uh, at various points throughout the program, you'll hear speakers referring to some of the innovations that are underway both here at King's and more widely uh, in UK higher education. And finally, and most importantly, um, this, this changing landscape throws up new ways, new business models for higher education, both nationally and internationally. Uh, there are enormous opportunities for partnership now across national boundaries in a way that we've never seen before. So um, rather than fearing these changes, it seems to me these are things to be welcomed, they're to be harnessed in the interests of our students and our staff and of course the wider community. So ladies and gentlemen, um, I wish you well over the next couple of days. Uh, it looks like a fascinating program. As I said at the outset, it seems to me that there are wonderful opportunities for us to exchange views, uh, for you to learn from us and for us to learn from you. Uh, and I'll speak on behalf of all of my colleagues here at King's and say 
uh, we're looking uh, forward to this uh, very much and we hope that you really do take something lasting away from this conference. And last of all, can I just say, um, this is also an opportunity for us to develop some professional relationships that will endure into the future and of course personal relationships. So enjoy yourselves over the next two days and I look forward to catching up with you at the end of the conference. Thank you. Thank you.